What's going on, guys? Uh, happy, happy Tuesday. So, uh, took a couple days off from making the YouTube videos, kind of enjoyed the long weekend, um, you know, hung out with some friends and family, uh, got my mind and my eyes off of the charts. So, you know, today's Tuesday. Um, what I kind of want to look at here on the triple Qs is, you know, we had a little bit of a gap up, okay? The market is still disconnected. I want everyone to kind of understand, you know, Technically, on the big macro picture view, you know, this is still a bear market. One green day does not, you know, kind of wipe away the last six, seven months of selling on the NASDAQ. Um, it's definitely a good start. It's definitely a feel good kind of feeling when your stocks kind of, you know, finally are green, right? We finally feel like we're a little bit green. Um, you know, wasn't a massive day today. Uh, a lot of the green portion of the day, you know, realistically came from the gap up. A lot of stocks within that first 30 minutes put in a high, and then we kind of pulled back a little bit into rising support. We pretty much treaded sideways the rest of the day, you know, a good four hours. Market really didn't do anything with the exception of like Tesla, um, you know, and even towards the end of the day, Tesla really did start to pull in. I'll talk about that in a little bit. I do have an open position on Tesla. I'm probably going to make another video on that. Took two trades, um, same entry point on Tesla. Took really, really nice trades to the long side. Wish I would have held a little bit longer. That's just the name of the game. Ended up getting back into the trade at the later uh, later half of the day. And I'm all, like I said, I'll make another, another video on that to kind of explain my position. But what we're going to look at here is just the overall markets from the, the tech side of things, right? So the NASDAQ 100, we got this gap over the five-day moving average. We tried to make an attempt to push higher. Now, the next level of supply is going to be 286.77. That's the blue line that you can see on my screen. It's the 10-day moving average. So what I kind of want to point out is even though today was a green day, the NASDAQ, the overall market, still stuck in between a rock and a hard place. Can we go higher? The opportunity is there. Can we go lower? The opportunity is there. I know that's not a lot of context. It's not a lot of information. But when you kind of zoom out and you look at the overall picture, obviously selling pressure is there. Could the 269, 280, you know, kind of be that bottom floor, bottom range? It's entirely possible, you know, could the market roll over, lose the five day moving average, go back and test 269, that's also possible. So what that's telling us is we need to be a little bit more patient, we need to be a little bit more uh, kind of lenient as far as, you know, what we're going to allow our trades to do. So there's setups on both sides of the spectrum, long, there's setups short. If we were looking for a short point of view, what we would like to see happen is run into the 10 day moving average somewhere between that 286 287 mark okay now when we run into that 10 day moving average here whether it be tomorrow whether it be the end of the week whether it be next week what we would be looking for is any sort of loss of that 10 day moving average and when we kind of lose that 10 day moving average that's when we're going to want to take our rejection short and we're going to want to play that into the rising daily five day moving average which is currently sitting at 277 now, from the long point of view, right, if we're looking at this to go long, we can completely do that. But what we need to do and what we need to understand is there's going to be more risk on the table as we start to kind of wiggle around these zones. Just due to the fact that we're so far underneath macro levels of supply and our low, which is what we're going to use as our absolute max pain stop loss for the overall market is 269 we you know we're going to kind of have to let these stocks and these indexes play within the range now obviously you're not going to allow yourself you know we're currently trading at 281 uh on the close you're not going to give yourself 269 as a stop you know especially if you're playing options that'd be absolutely foolish but so what we can do to kind of tighten up that stop loss is use the rising daily five-day moving average as your stop that's going to be 277 dollars let's just draw the line in the sand there Let's tell ourselves, make it real simple. Hey, if the NASDAQ 100 loses 277 on a daily close, I'm going to exit my long positions. I'm going to have to eat and accept those losses and move along and per perhaps, you know, try to look to the downside for that 269 test or even leg down. Now, if we're going to play to the long side, as long as we stay over the cues, meaning I'm talking about the cues. So regardless whether you're playing NVIDIA or you're playing Tesla, you're playing AMD, you're playing Microsoft, so forth and so forth. 
as long as the Qs, the triple Qs ETF index is holding the five day moving average. Let's give the bulls some benefit of the doubt and let's continue to stay in these long positions. Let's kind of work towards our measured potential, which is going to be the next area of supply. Now, I'm not going to say we're going back to 300. I'm just going to take this one day at a time, one level of supply at a time and one trade at a time. Anything over today's highs of 281, uh, you know, I mean, excuse me, 283.80 has room to 286.77. So we have another three points worth of room, okay? That's going to be more than enough opportunity to kind of get in on a particular stock or even the, the ETF and kind of let that wiggle. Now, being that we did close at 281, we still have about two points worth of ground to kind of make up before we want to actually get long. So just make sure you understand going into the 22nd of June that you don't just jump into calls because you think it's coming back up to the 10-day moving average. And then next thing you know, we never make it up to today's high price, kind of trickle around sideways, and let's say Thursday, Friday start to roll back over. We want to make sure that we do take out today's highs. You can see going back here to the 13th as well. This high wick is sitting at around 282. Today's high wick is sitting at around 283. So we want to get out of this channel and we want to start building over this area and start making a push up to 286. Now, if the bulls can do that, you got to also think here, we had support here, we had support here, we had support here, which is also correlating with the 10 day moving average. This area here is going to act as a very, very sticky area. Okay, a lot of price action there. Previous support is now going to turn into resistance. So anytime you kind of see this setting up on your charts, you want to understand that if you are long now, currently, which is Tuesday, the 21st of June, you want to make sure that as we do come into this 286 zone, you're at least taking some profits off the table and then leaving a runner in case we do reclaim that and continue our dead cat bounce onto the next level of supply of 291. Now, again, as long as we stay over the five day moving average, the stock can come all the way back down. It can come back up, come back down. But as long as we stay over, we have to just let the bulls do their thing. Okay. If you're playing options, maybe you need to give yourself an extra week on those options contracts. If you're playing equities, it's a lot easier. Just use the five day moving average as your absolute stop. The triple keys lose the five day moving average, kind of just exit those positions to the long side. If the market does roll over tomorrow or Thursday or Friday, and we never really make it up here to the 10 day moving average. We kind of just come back down. Maybe we bounce and then we start to lose the five day moving average. That's when we're going to want to get short that position. Uh, that price right now is going to be 277. Anything below 277 is definitely going to have room back down to 269. Okay. So if we do decide to take that trade to the downside, just understand the same way we're going to use the five day moving average as our stop long. We're going to also use it as our stop short so if we do lose the 277 if we close back above the five-day moving average we need to exit the trade okay as long as we stay below 277 we're going to continue to hold our short positions we're going to keep this very very simple i know there's a lot of information going on out there on social media is this the bottom you know uh, this is just a, a bear a bull trap so forth and so forth you know maybe some people are right maybe some people are wrong all we can really do is kind of just follow the technicals and kind of do what the chart is telling us to do, right? If you can think back to grammar school, kindergarten, preschool, remember when they gave you a coloring book and they told you stay within the lines? If you've ever wondered why I have so many lines on my chart, because I'm trying to paint a beautiful picture between the lines. Above the lines, I want to go long. Below the lines, I want to go short for, you know, better you know, for better wording, when we clear out a level of supply, I want to go long and I want to target the next area of supply macro wise on the daily chart. And when we lose a level of demand, I want to target the next area of demand macro wise. Now, obviously, there's going to be trades long and short, both, you know, intraday on the on the five minute time frame, the one hour time frame, the one minute time frame, so forth and so forth. There's always going to be trades setting up, but just kind of giving you guys a macro overview of the overall direction of where this market is going and where potentially it could be heading. We're kind of, you know, still in no man's indecisive land. We still have a very good opportunity to continue the bounce into 286 and 291. However, we also do have a chance to lose 277 and retest the lows of 269. 
it's up to you as a trader to kind of identify these zones and be able to push your risk to the middle of the table and be able to capitalize when you can if you guys did join enjoy this video please make sure to like comment and subscribe also join my discord that link is down in the description box below if you guys are looking for a trading strategy i offer a free one first link down below if you guys want access to all of my coursework two uh, video courses over four and a half hours long detailing and outlining how i trade what i trade when i trade you can find that become a lifetime member at evolutiontraders.com and i will see you guys all on the next video